Hello, everyone. This is Leonard de Guzman here with Emily Robinson on the Life After D podcast. We're here um, like the last days of July, last days of summer until like I feel like August is like when it feels like um, fall starts because like fantasy football rankings come out and football season comes out. Um, Yeah. And kids go back to school. Did you do the back to school shopping? that now (laughs) it's all pretty much online now so um which is nice and a lot easier yeah it's like it was back back in the day it was a thing like uh, my mom would take us out and we'd have like stacks of notebooks and I'd go to Target right we get the trapper keepers remember those (laughs) yeah yep I had many of those all right so July 27th 2021 uh we're here in uh los angeles county los la um where uh i think it's weird because um i i went out of town uh and uh some counties i guess it's san bernardino county riverside county they don't um from what i understand they don't uh require masks some places like um some like like i went to home depot and um other places and mm-hmm. restaurants um it's not it's not so i i assume uh is that the same in, in like you, i mean i remember you mentioning last week about that in, in court too it's kind of weird right yeah it depends on the county some counties are and some counties aren't so um ventura county um at least as far as I know, still is not requiring masks, but LA County is. So it's just very county specific. And then on another like, um, I guess tangent, it's the vaccinations. I know there's certain um, companies that are gonna require it. You would probably go to a diff- like a court, right? To like, I guess in a way that's like your right to choose and, and there's a legality to it. And then does that um, kind of uh, uh, go off to like how how parents are between like children? Like, hey, um, you know, because I know that's an issue just among like um, family members, right? Like vaccination and and how does that work in, yeah, how does that, is there there conversations about that between um, parents? I mean, it's hard when parents disagree on vaccination. So yeah, there's definitely conversations and, um, you know, if they can't agree to an extent that they need the court to decide, um, the court won't typically decide who's getting, you know, if your kid's going to be vaccinated or not, that's a parental decision. Um, But they can decide which parent has the decision-making power. Oh, that's interesting. That's, yeah. This is all new. It's like uh, every new things come out. It's like uh, with this uh, COVID thing, it's like the world in a way is resetting. Uh, and there's like a new, it's like a wild, wild west thing. So uh, yeah, with that said, uh, let's get to the news today. Um, let's see what's going on um, with divorce and how it's trending. So the first article we have is from msn.com 15 states where divorce is most common Ooh, okay let's so let's see it um national divorce rate has fallen over the past 10 years according to recent u.s consensus bureau data um there were 7.6 new divorces per 1,000 women in 2019 compared with 9.7 per thousand in 2009 um, that trend also held in some states where divorce is most common, although not all of them. In a couple of states, divorce the divorce rate has gone up in recent years, following a look um, at the states where divorce happens most frequently, ranked based on their divorce rate as, as of 2019. So here is let's see, uh, where is it? Went away. Um, well, I think since COVID, divorces have certainly gone up. It's loading. Okay. Um, 
No, oh, man, we're going to have to like, um, okay, we're going to have to figure that out later. I guess. Yeah, it's here to the census. Um, okay, here we go. Um, so Wyoming, in 2019, Wyoming's marriage rate was among the highest in the nation. Delaware's marriage rate uh, was among the lowest. Arkansas's divorce rate was among the highest. Uh, divorce rates in District of Columbia and Maine were among the lowest in the nation. This is, like, this is interesting. Okay, so let's, um, I've never been to um, Arkansas, uh, so that's the highest, which is. Uh, that surprises me. I was going to guess, you know, very urban areas. Like, you know, that have really some of the biggest populations like California, New York. Yeah, I thought it would be like, it would, cause then your lifestyles like, or maybe in areas like that where life's slower, you're stuck with the same person all day. Um, That's so, true okay. too. All That's right, true. so, all right. Well, there's not much there. There's, there's just, I guess cons consensus is uh, just, um, collect that data. There's not much to go on, but um, here's something interesting. Uh, so Scooter Braun, uh, he's uh, he's like Justin Bieber's manager, I think. Is, is, I think this is the guy. Mm -hmm. So so he got divorced and he deactivated social media accounts days after filing for divorce from wife um, Yael. I think that's they say. So Scooter Braun stepping away from social media. Over the weekend, the followers noticed the manager deactivated both his Twitter and Instagram accounts. While Scooter did not give a reason for his departure from the platforms, the move came days after he filed for divorce from his wife of seven years. According to the documents obtained by E! News, the music executive filed for divorce from the um, F uh, cancer founder in Los Angeles court on July 21st, TMZ citing the filing report, reported scooters asking for joint custody for their three kids. Um, so this is like a good thing. So so if if you delete it, right, before I guess the whole divorce, because he's, he's in a way protecting himself, because um, I mean, you could probably archive some posts and, and, and think he probably, um, he's like, oh, you know, I don't want to self, uh, incriminate myself. Um, how does this work? Is, has this ever come up where they deleted it and then they've saved posts um, and they bring it up again in court? Yeah, I mean, once something's out on the internet, it's out there and just deleting it doesn't get rid of it. If somebody has already screenshot it or printed it or, you know, can find a way to, to find the deleted content, I mean, it's there. So you have to really think before you put anything out there because just deleting it doesn't make it not exist anymore it still was out there and it still can be found somehow so yes that comes up in court all the time people bring that stuff up many cases I've had have turned on an email or a text message seeing what people say to each other and things like that okay um just more Bradgelina stuff about yeah. the judge. We covered that last time. Well, I guess they have to find a new judge. Um, not much, not much news. Uh, celebrity news. It's like we're recycling the same stuff. Okay, so let's <laughs> let's same move. Celebrities um, always. Yeah, in the news. same. I think they like they want us to talk about them. Like they, they just like keep talking about me. Uh, get more promo for my show. Um, so <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Let's um, go to Dear Emily, um, where uh, this part of the show, we go over uh, posts um, people put um, where Emily gives advice on, uh, you know, starting the divorce uh, process, child custody, um, sometimes even like retirement, uh, IRAs come up. Uh, so we'll see what we get today. All right. Go through this. All right, this one looks like a long one. Okay, this is a getting started one. Um, this, is, this is a 
a person uh, with kids who anticipated a peaceful divorce and then something happened here. So um, he goes, uh, 36 year old male, I'm planning a divorce. My wife of 10 years, we have two kids around age five. The reason for the divorce is we've grown apart. I've changed a lot, she's changed. Uh, 1.5 years of couples counseling didn't help. We value different things and our foundation is cracked and eventually broken us to where um, going back to is impossible. Uh, day to day, uh, we're civil to each other, co-parenting. In fact, that sums it up well. We're pretty much roommates with co-parenting. Um, I, I'm sure 100% um, I want a divorce. I've been speaking to a counselor to help me work out my emotions. I feel guilty and, and being around the kids. I'm 100% sure she does too. Um, if, if you were to inject her with truth serum, but I think she's scared to face that reality given I'm the breadwinner and she's a stay at home mom. Um, here's the thing, I'm, I'm making a decent amount of assumptions. She won't likely move away because her friend group is here. She likes the city, her parents are a couple hours away, uh, far as mine. Uh, yes, there are um, very hurt feelings, but we do this amicably without lawyers and contesting things. She will let me see the kids a decent amount because all parties involved, um, they know uh, I'm, a, I'm a dad that likes to be very involved. She's a good relationship with my parents, and now I'm preparing uh, for that to be strained, and um, then it becomes all business relating only to grandkids. Uh, she won't. Uh, lawyer up, she has always let me largely handle the finances and uh, and will view it as generous that I will not say a complaint to uh, her taking half of everything. So um, so for some real talk, if, if you went into thinking it was going to be uh, relatively straightforward or uncontested, what things um, did you see not coming? Am I being possibly naive about this? Wow, well, that's a good question. I mean, I don't think it's naive. I think things can be amicable and done easily. Um, there's always gonna be details that come up that maybe you didn't think of, like you just realized, oh, we don't agree on public versus private school or what religion our child's gonna be raised or you know, someone has to move for a job or something. So there's always things that could come up that haven't been thought of, but there are many cases too where crazy things don't come up and you just work it all out. And it actually is, you know, rather simple, not emotionally, but it's rather simple to disentangle all the finances. And if you can keep it that way, that's ideal because it's less money going to the lawyers and less, you know, stress for the kids. Okay, let's see, let's go to the next post. Um, oh, infidelity. Um, is it cheating if spouse wants divorce? My husband requested a divorce months ago. He's told me there's zero chance of working on things. He's cold and disconnected. He's deleting texts with another woman and going on vacation in September with a different girl. He hasn't filed for divorce. I've told him, um, wait you're doing is cheating, it's infidelity. I don't wanna break up our family. He says, I've been, um, haven't been sexual with anyone. Even if I have, it's not cheating. We're not together anymore. Is he right? Well, that's the good question. Look, I, there's no right answer to that. Cheating depends on your own personal morals and definition of it. Um, but what I can say is once you decide you're separated and that you're going to file for divorce, the court considers your marriage over for purposes of dividing property and things like that. So even though you're still technically married until the whole thing is done, um, it's not it's not generally frowned upon to date after you've decided you're separating. Hmm. The, um, so this okay. Next one is a getting started one uh, for those who. We're in just okay, not terrible, not great marriages. What made you leave? Uh, struggling with the should I stay or should I go question. So many good things, so many not so good. Um, it would be a second divorce for me, a, a third for my spouse. 
Um, how did others um, assess the balance? My first marriage was easy to walk away from, um, run away from. This one isn't so much. Yeah, that's a tough one because, you know, again, it's very specific to the person. But um, I think the key is that you have to use your intuition. If you think there's enough good that it's worth saving, then go get counseling, go get therapy, do the things that you can to save your marriage. If your intuition is telling you, no matter what I do, I'm there's too many bad things, you know, this isn't going to work, then maybe don't spend the time doing all that stuff and move on now so that it's, you know, quicker and maybe less painful. But you got to trust your gut on some things. There's not always a factual answer to everything or a legal answer. Sometimes it's just your instinct and your gut and your body telling you, okay, I'm done with this or no, I'm not quite done yet. Let's see, this one's uh, wanted getting started one. Um, I wanted to say thank you to Divorce Care. I'm going through my divorce and I'm hoping it's finalized by, by the end of the year because of COVID. Um, they were doing online only. I only anticipated in two or three online sessions at my church, but I watched all the online videos and I subscribed to their daily emails. Their emails are very helpful and I've used some of the su suggestions. Um, anyway, I just wanted to share some positive feedback. Hmm. Well, that's good. Hearing positive things is nice and we don't hear that that much. <laughs> um, but yeah, like having, um, you know, any type of guidance through the divorce process is going to be helpful. Having, you know, um, using a court, you know, system, like, for example, talking parents is one that we use to for parents to communicate with each other. And it's a platform to communicate that makes things a lot easier. And you can email each other back and forth or having emails from a support group or a church or something like all those things are helpful. It takes a village. One person can't usually just do this on their own. It's too emotional and it's too hard. So, um, you know, that should be something that you have in a divorce if you're going to go through one and have, um, you know, some system set up around you to, to help you through it. Now, do you find that like these online, like, therapy versus like in person do you feel like it's different or like is it does, or is it the same like do you feel like um, like your clients I mean it's the same as like having divorce court on like zoom right there's something about being in person what do you think of that yeah I think it's hard you know I think most people are doing it through zoom right now doing their therapy through zoom and I think it's hard um, I think you miss a lot of the personal interaction and the personal cues that you might see if you were in person. But I also think that it's it's doable and we've made this a lifestyle change for most industries. And so, uh, you know, there's pluses and minuses. I think people should still have in-person contact to some degree for certain important things. But for the most part, you know, I think that we've done a really good job replacing that with Zoom for convenience and um, obviously because of the pandemic. But um, I think in a lot of realms, Zoom is gonna stay. I do think for therapy though, sometimes it is probably better to be able to read body language and you know be in the same room. Yeah, and then you're not distracted and then and then the right. other side, the downside is gas is so damn expensive. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, there's pluses and minuses to everything. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, this is a finance one. Okay, financial one. Uh, equitable distribution and investments. Husband and I are going to work through our attorneys to come to an agreement. My assets are are my car um, paid off and it's mine, his stock, the 401k and life insurance policy through um, equitable that, that is uh, 
EQ, that's equity 500, and also optimize their life plan with cash value. I'm, I am the beneficiary on life insurance. You want to stay in our marital home. Personally, I don't mind leaving, but would of course want to be bought out of our accumulated property. I just want to know if anyone has experience and how it worked out for you. Um, this person's in New Jersey. They were together nine years, married five. Year two of marriage, he asked me to leave my career to focus on his promotion. He wants to pay alimony in a lump sum, 300K income for him, 10K in unemployment benefits for me. Um, what's the best way to split uh, investments in the retirement? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a tough question because it really depends on everybody's situation. But um, as long as you come up with an equal division based on, you know, the amount of time you were married, then, you know, you can split it however you want, whatever makes the most sense to you. You can actually split it. You can buy the other person out. You just have to be really careful of taxes because some splits will have tax issues and some won't. So you have to consider that and if it will be an issue for you or not when you do the division because um, not all assets are the same. It's not the same to give one person a pension that's taxed and one person a bank account that's not going to lose any money to taxes. All right. The last one of the day is uh, how do I prepare for a divorce? Uh, slash custody mediation. Uh, I'm trying to prepare for mediation. Honestly, not 100% sure um, what you're going to ask for. It boils down to custody. She's not good with money, um, never has been. So I think it comes down to paying support. I think I'm just going to ask her to sign over her rights altogether, still giving her time with the kids every other weekend or something. Kids need a mother. Um, she doesn't have to pay support. Uh, she can keep every dollar I've given her so far, um, so far for the house and cars, things like that. I'm just tired of stressing about the kids and seeing them sad when she doesn't pick them up uh, for her time. It's been well documented that I have the kids the majority of the time. And I pay for all their needs. Um, she she does pay 500 a month, but I figure that um, figure out like selling things and spend spending money on the kids. I don't need much for myself so I, I know I can make it work my only concern is um, she fights um, just because um, how, we weirdly written how it would make her look I realize I've, I've been married to a 30 year old high schooler or her family won't let her which um, I've always opened my door when they come into town even let her mom sleep at my house I'm just stressed I'm just don't like seeing the kids like this, uh, really don't like missing them so much. Uh, money spent on lawyers, plans canceled to um, much work, um, not enough sleep and can never escape my mind. Wow. I mean, that's a lot going on there. Um, you know, that's the whole thing is it doesn't escape your mind. And not only are you thinking about what you want, but you're trying to think about strategy and what does the other person want and will they do this and will they agree to that and that's really tough so that's where having you know a team to help you is really good having a therapist a lawyer a mediator whoever you need in your team to help you figure out what is going to be best for your family is important and for everybody that's different you know that can look different for everyone but um it is always on your mind. And so you need to do what you can to get advice and um, help from other people so that you're able to move on. All right, that's the last post of the day. Um, we'll uh, see everyone in in August. Um, so so um, Emily, um, with like things, I know here in Los Angeles County, things are like kind of like, Okay, they're gonna start school, and right. then with, and then it's like, okay, we're gonna. Is there any word yet with like, well, well like this county, um, with the schools, or because that affects, um, you know, parenting and all. Right. That. Yeah, we just don't know at the moment. They say they're going back in person, but as we've seen, that could change any second. So, um, 
you know, I hope that they can. I really do. Um, but we'll just have to see. Okay, we'll know in August or September um, whenever yes. we get the announcement. So thanks everyone so much for joining us on the Life After D podcast. See you next time. Bye.